Welcome to the virtual open day for history at Oriel College in Oxford. My name is Ian Forrest. I'm the Professor of Social and Religious History here at Oriel. Um, I work for the history faculty as well. I'm one of two fellows in history at Oriel College. My colleague Yulia Manhertz is a specialist in uh, modern Russian history, whereas my specialism is in the Middle Ages. In this brief talk, I'm going to give you an overview of studying history at Oxford, uh, try to give you some sense of what it might mean for you, what it might be like, um, and tell you a few things about choosing colleges, uh, what to put in an application, and um, a, few a few words at the end on why history at Oriel is distinctive. At Oriel, we offer uh, students the opportunity to study the single honours degree in history, as well as the joint honours degrees in history with modern languages, with economics, with politics and ancient and modern history. Altogether, this presents you with a wide range of ways of studying history, um, and I'm sure that there'll be something here to interest you. Studying history can mean different things. It'll mean different things to you now than it will at the end of your degree. And in between that, you'll probably look at the study of history in a number of different ways. First of all, you'll probably have learnt so far to study the past on its own terms. We're not trying to impose ourselves on the past, we're trying to understand what it was really like to live in a particular time and place in the past. While that's important, it's also very important in the study of history to understand how your own life is a product of historical forces and how the lives of other people are and have been also the product of historical forces. By this I mean that no one's situation in the world, today or at any point in the past, is entirely down to their own initiative or qualities. Everyone lives in a time that they didn't choose and in, and in conditions which they couldn't make. Um, some people are more aware of this than others. Um, I definitely think that uh, students who can uh, appreciate how their own lives are shaped by historical forces tend to have a head start in the study of history. The study of history, then, involves a very particular uh, way of looking at the relationship between the past and the present. We need to be aware of our own situation within history in order to study the past. We need to be aware of how the past uh, has unfolded in order to understand the present. History can be put to many uses. Some of these uses you might describe as abuses of history. It's when history is fabricated or history is uh, used to serve um, uh, purposes that you perhaps don't agree with. But history can also be used to serve purposes that you do agree with. Um, it's a very moral subject, but that, mor that morality um, is subjective and uh, something which people vehemently disagree on. The uses of history is also something uh, we would encourage you to think about in terms of how a history degree might be useful to you. Students who study history go on to a huge range of careers um, and they go on to live all sorts of uh, varied lives. All kinds of different people are suitable to study history and history can enrich um, the lives of, uh, well, I, I believe, of anyone. Students who study history go on to work um, in um, all sorts of uh, careers. Um, some of those make a lot of money, some of them are more socially useful. Um, whatever your goals are, we can support them through the study of history. In your history degree, you'd use a wide range of different methods in order to deepen your knowledge and understanding. At Oxford, we encourage the uh, acquisition of an awareness of time depth. We uh, will make you study um, history uh, across a wide chronology from the end of the ancient world right up to the present day. We'll also ensure that you finish your history degree having studied uh, history in geographical breadth. During your degree you have to study at least one period of British history, at least one period of European uh, history, and at least one paper uh, in extra-European world history. You'll study history using a wide range of questions and approaches, 
including but not limited to cultural, social, gender, political history, um, history inflected by race, class, religion, language. Um, and you'll use a wide range of sources, objects, texts, speech, landscape, documents, memory, to name just a few. Your history degree will involve um, weekly tutorials. Now at Oxford, the tutorial is probably the main way of teaching. It involves an hour-long discussion with a tutor, um, and perhaps just you, or uh, maybe two, you and one other student, or sometimes two other students. In that hour, you'll discuss an essay, which you'll have written in the week beforehand, um, and then conversation will branch off more broadly into the surrounding um, field. Tutors are looking to question you as a way to extend your knowledge. We're not looking to quiz you and to trip you up and to test you. Um, and the tutorial is an opportunity to ask questions, questions that have come up in your reading. Um, typically, most of the time in tutorial is spent trying to understand um, the questions that you couldn't find an answer to in your reading and that you couldn't find a way to work into your weekly essay. Those really tricky topics are the, at the heart of studying history. And dialogue, conversation, seeing another person's point of view is one of the best ways of learning. To support those weekly tutorials and essays, you have a course of lectures for most of the papers that you take. Um, this will, lectures will involve sitting in a room with students from other colleges, um, and uh, the lecturers will come from lots of different colleges across the university. In some of the papers that you study throughout the three years or of your degree, uh, you'll sit in medium-sized groups of uh, between 5 and 15 people, uh, which we will call seminars or classes. These are opportunities for discussion, um, opportunities for hearing from other people, and opportunities to pore over texts very closely, look at primary sources and so on. As history students, you'll be spending most of your time, though, um, in libraries or um, or wherever you like, but reading. History students have got to love reading and to have an appetite to, um, uh, to, study, the, to study on their own initiative um, and to read a lot. We also want history students to be aware of and interested in the world around them. And this is a great resource for studying history. When I say the world around you, I mean the people who you're studying with, the people in your wider social network, and then the world beyond that. Uh, we want history students to engage with the world around them, to learn from it, to examine it, to critique it, to change it. During your history degree at Oxford, you would study a number of different papers. These would include History of the British Isles, which is an outline paper uh, covering a long chronological period and looking at lots of different themes. Outline papers also in European and world history, again looking at lots of themes over a long chronology. There are several source-based papers in the first, second and third year, which you would look at particularly primary sources in great detail um, and come to be expert in them. In the first year you'd study a methodological paper called Approaches to History, where you'd choose from um, one of six other disciplines that have influenced the study of history and come to understand their methodological approaches and influence upon the writing of history. These are art history, archaeology, anthropology, gender studies, economics and sociology. In the second year we would have a seminar in disciplines of history. This is a study of how history has been written and also of historical comparison. In looking at how history has been written uh, and how history is written now, we'd introduce you to some of the major um, methodological currents in the writing of history. And in looking at comparative history, we would uh, draw on the knowledge that you have acquired during your degree to look at uh, some really interesting themes in world history, such as revolution, emotions, um, journeys, just for example. The highlight of the undergraduate history degree, history degree is probably the thesis. The thesis is a piece of original research, a 12,000 word piece of writing in which you become the person in the world who knows the most about your chosen subject. 
these theses are genuinely original pieces of research. And every year it amazes me, but I've become used to it, that undergraduate students write fantastic pieces of original historical research, genuine contributions to knowledge. People choose their thesis subjects in a variety of ways. Sometimes people want to follow up something from a weekly essay that they didn't have time to look at properly, or they want to investigate a source that grabbed their attention. Sometimes people choose to write about something which has just made them angry, um, an interpretation that they think is wrong, or a subject they think has been neglected. Very often people bring their interests from outside history to bear here and study something which resonates with their wider interests in the world. Um, an approach to politics that uh, motivates them, or a hobby that interests them. In addition to these compulsory parts of the history degree, we strongly recommend the study of languages. Historians ought to learn languages. You may have studied languages at school. Um, you can keep them going at Oxford um, at any level uh, through our University Language Centre. And if you want to learn from scratch or continue learning a language that isn't supported by the Language Centre at Oriel, we will pay for you to do that. Now, one of the things that really often worries people when they're thinking about applying to study at Oxford is how to choose a college. And I'm here to tell you not to worry about this. Uh, obviously, I'd be delighted if you choose to apply to Oriel, but really, college choice is the least important part of your application to Oxford. Don't worry about it. It would be perfectly rational to stick a pin in the map and choose a college on that basis. Now, this is because colleges are more alike than they are different. Students at Oxford have very strong uh, feelings about the particular character and identity of their college, um, but I've never been convinced that these are true reflections of what life is actually like. Certainly not of the differences between colleges, and sometimes you, these can, reputations can be misleading. A more important reason for not worrying too much about college choice is that whatever college you go to, you'll have access to the whole history curriculum. Colleges don't, don't restrict your choice of options based on who their historians are. So as I said at the beginning of this presentation, I'm a medieval historian. Um, I've got a colleague in modern Russian history. I've got colleagues with other specialisms. But we don't just want people who are interested already in medieval history and modern Russia to apply to Oriel. Whatever your interests are, we will send you to the specialist in Oxford best equipped to teach you. In practical terms, this will mean that some of your um, tutorials will be taken uh, with Oriel tutors, but some of them, perhaps half, perhaps more than half of your tutorials, will be with tutors elsewhere in other Oxford colleges um, who've got the specialism that you want to study. So don't worry about college choice. An increasing number of people um, who, who get places at Ox to study at Oxford, I think about 30% at the moment, are not at the college they applied to. So you shouldn't form too close an attachment to a college at the application stage because even if you're successful, you might end up studying at a different college to the one you applied. So what are we looking for when we read your applications? We're looking for people who are interested in the world around them, people who are critical of received wisdom, people who are willing to learn from others. And above all this, we're looking for people who are able to work on their own initi initiative. We're not looking for a particular type of person. And um, every year, um, this is proved true as I get a, uh, a real wide range of, um, of character types uh, sitting in front of me in Freshers' Week. We want people who are full of potential. Now, the message that I've put on the slide here, that this is not a prize for privilege or for prior attainment, is really important. All of you will have done well at school. Some of you will have a, a better record from school in terms of your numerical grades. Um, and whilst I'll, we're going to look at your numerical grades from GCSE and from A-level or whatever qualifications you've done, um, we're actually looking for your potential. We're trying to gauge how well you will do over the course of a three or a four year history degree. Now this is very difficult to do, and in, in addition to your exam results and your teacher's reference and um, some written work which you submit and the history aptitude test which you will all take, um, we also use um, what we call contextual information, 
we look at the school you've been to, we look at the um, range of results achieved by uh, other pupils at your school over the years, and we see where you sit in relation to them. And we use this in order to try and find people who have not yet reached their full potential. We're looking for people who have outperformed their educational background. And this has been a really good proven way of uh, helping us find the students with the most potential to study history at Oxford. So what's distinctive about history at Oriel? Well, we firmly believe that diversity is our strength, and this is reflected in the sort of students we've admitted over the past um, 10 to 15 years. The vast majority of our students come from state schools, and that's simply because the vast majority of students in the UK come from state schools. Um, we've got a pretty strong record on uh, black and minority ethnic admissions, this is something where we can always improve and we're delighted to receive applications from anyone. We've got a really good balance between male and female students, around about 60% female um, over the last few years, and this reflects the national average for the study of history in the UK. We also extend um, a warm welcome to uh, LGBTQ plus students. Um, we've got long experience in supporting students of uh, all identities, um, and we believe that this is absolutely a part of the um, situation in relation to history that I spoke about at the beginning of this situation, of, of, this, of this presentation, I beg your pardon. Whoever you are and wherever you come from, you've got a unique position from which to think about the world. And we want to help you find ways to um, understand that position and to use it to understand the world and its history better. We'd also want you to listen to and learn from people whose situation in relation to the world is different to yours. And that's the first and most valuable uh, learning tool at the disposal of the history student. Well, thank you very much for listening to this presentation. Um, and if you've got questions about the application process, you should contact the admissions office at Oriel College. And do engage with the... Um, virtual open day materials um, on offer from the history faculty and I look forward to seeing your applications uh, in the future.